our last episode, we took a detour and hung out with Prairie Dogs and the Devil's Tower National Monument. This time around, we wind our way through the national grasslands looking for wildlife before ending up in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Okay, we left Devil's Tower this morning and we're heading to Thunder Basin National Grasslands to see if we can find some wildlife. Thank you. No thanks. But before we go, Brenda's been making us eat a whole lot of tofu and veggies. Me and Wolf are wasting away to nothing. We're powering up with steak and eggs at Donner's Diner in Moorcroft, Wyoming. Mm. It doesn't even taste like tofu. I feel powerful already. We're going to Thunder Basin National Mon- no. Where are we going? Thunder Basin National Grassland to look for wildlife. There's supposed to be bison there. Let's see if we find some. And we got treats. Somebody's on eclairs? <laughs> yeah, we got eclairs too. Kind of excited about those. Okay, this is the grasslands. We're on the hunt for wildlife. Thunder Basin grasslands, bust. Everywhere we went, it was either houses, ranches, no trespassing, or stuff like this. Oil refineries and oil pumps. So we drove around for a couple hours. We did see some antelope. Otherwise, it was a bust. We're moving on. Uptown, best town on earth. It's a big claim for Uptown. I don't really see much out here. With Upton having not much more than a large refinery, we kept pushing on. And shortly after Upton, well, we made it to this place. We made it to South Dakota. Woohoo! Woo! And shortly after pulling into South Dakota, we made it to Custer. Look what Brenda's got. Have ice cream. He never they don't get ice anything. cream because they haven't been very good. It's been a long car ride and they were not very good. Who could have bought that Complained the whole way. After a long day in the car, we stretched our legs in town while looking for a new outfit for Wolf. Black Hills National Forest, looking for a campground. Not really a campground, a camp spot. With lots to see in the area, we made our way into the hills to try to find a home base. And at the very tippity top, well, a home base was found. And after camp is set up, we've got to see what's around. Looks like an ant, but it smells like cow shit. <laughs> <laughs> it does though. Like, can I, smell it? I can actually smell it from here. Yeah. And the next morning, we were off to this place. Jewel Cave National Monument. Here we come. It's the third largest cave in the world. Brenda's terrified. I was like, Brenda's super excited, but it's large. It is large. So we're it's gonna long. check it out. It's long. It's long. I think Not it's a uh, hundred and eighty miles. It's really? For real? One hundred and eighty miles of mapped cave. And Brenda doesn't believe me. Hmm. Hmm. With over a hundred and eighty miles of map yeah. passageways, we it's had to see this place. Okay, Go we'll in. Right here. In 1900. The Jewel Cave was discovered by two local prospectors. And because the walls of the cavern were lined with calcite crystals that glowed and shimmered by the light of their lanterns, they named this place the Jewel Cave. By 1959, less than two miles of passageways had been discovered. And with the help of two local rock climbers, exploration really began and an additional 15 miles of passageways were mapped within two years. And even today, with over 180 miles of discovered passageways, it's still estimated there's a whole lot more down there to find. We made it, we made it out alive. Just barely. Pretty awesome cave though. 
It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. I knew it was going to be long, but the caverns were huge. Brian, I was so disappointed about that. Like, he wanted really to crawl through there. <laughs> now we gotta go find some lunch. Going on a tour makes me hungry. This place is smoked out. We were down under the ground for an hour and a half, and now it's smoky. And since we're adults, we can have anything we want for lunch. Well, let's hurry and eat this because then we can go over there and get something else. Oh, look at that! And it just so happened that while we were stuffing our face with treats, Custer, South Dakota was hosting its annual Studebaker and Packard car show. And it probably goes without saying, you can look, but don't touch. Wanna get this one? After we had our fill of some pretty cool old cars, we made our way to the Custer State Park to try to find some wildlife. And that's where we found this guy, right on the side of the road. And right after that one, we found another one right up in the trees. So we had to stop to take some pictures. We made it to Custer State Park. There's a bison hanging out under a tree. Wolf went to get a picture, but he's kind of a chicken. Didn't even get very close to it. We told him it was a petting zoo and everything. I don't think he believed us. Here comes the chicken. We thought you were gonna pet it, Wolf. Jam from the burrow. Brenda loves wild burrows. After a fun-filled day with lots of wildlife encounters, we made our way back into the hills to our home base. Since we're camped out, there's a bunch of cows just roaming around <laughs> out here. Right back there. Bunch of cows roaming around through the national forest. We're having a steak. I'm gonna show them what their life's gonna end up like. In my belly. Actually, in a wolf's belly. Those poor guys over there are watching you while they're cook you're cooking their brother. Hmm. You don't even feel guilty about it. No, I'm kind of excited about it, really. Delicious. Since Wolf and I were feeling powerful with our bellies full of red meat, the next day we went into the Custer State Park for some world-class rock climbing. Could you please yell when you fall? And of course, Brenda's got to show us how it's done. And since Brenda survived, and Wolf and I can't be shown up, we both had to take our turns. And once we were significantly worn out, we were off into the hills to find a new place to camp for the night. Because the following day, we were going to try our best to fulfill one of Wolf's lifelong dreams. Alright, we're just outside of... We're outside of Custer, South Dakota, and since this place is chock full of cowboys, we're going horseback riding. This is Wolf's lifelong dream to be a German cowboy. Today he gets his chance. Brenda's got her cowboy shirt on. That's right. We 
don't have boots, which is pretty disappointing. Or don't even have a cowboy hat or a belt buckle. I don't even have a belt. Too bad there wasn't a thrift shop that we could go and get yeah. cowboy gear. Are you excited? I'm excited. I love riding horses. You don't even look like a cowboy right now. I do. Look at my shirt. I'm wearing a plaid shirt. That's as much as I could do on short notice. With as much cowboy gear as we could muster on short notice, we were off. Giddy up. We're in the Black Hills National Forest. For a city slicker and sailor, this is cowboy as it gets. <laughs> and I'm honestly, I'm kind of terrified. My horse has bad gas. <laughs> Wolf is up there texting and driving. Four wheel drive. You can do it, you can do it. I think my horse wishes he had a less fat person on him. It's been a long day on the trail. Ding! This cowboy business is tough. Pretty sure we're on the home stretch. All of a sudden my horse wants to go a little faster. Like, get this fat guy off my back. <laughs> he ate way too many tacos in Mexico. One to ten, how cowboy was I? A look three, but you rode a ten. Uh, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Fine. Thanks. And for Wolf? Okay, so <laughs> look, probably a one. <laughs> <laughs> and then riding a fever. We attend to. You what? Did really good. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay. We have to go shopping now. Yeah, we actually need cowboy hats and stuff. Thanks. Thank you guys. See you later. See you. Corey from Rockin' R Trail Rides. Great. Knees and butt. Not so great. <laughs> I'm sore. I'm doing great. I don't know what they're complaining about. How about you, Wolf? I'm okay, except my knees hurt. I got the best rating for cowboy look, which is a three. <laughs> Cowboy what? riding, I got a 10. I didn't even get a reading. You know why? Because you don't look cowboy. I do, I have a plaid shirt. Cheers. Just rode horses? Cheers. We need them. Even a horse is survived. This actually looks really good. A Reuben, a real Reuben. And a watermelon radish. After a long day in the saddle, there's nothing like some good grub. But that's about it for this episode. We'll see you next time. Everything is, is woven, it is good. <laughs>